Welcome back, everyone. Now, it's only the start of the week, but because it's summertime, we've got our drinks expert, mm -hmm. a.k.a. she likes her booze. Susan Boyle is in to tell us all about some fizz, but not as we know it. Yeah, I decided that usually when people think of sparkling things, uh, they think of champagne or Prosecco. So yeah. I thought it would be really nice to try some new world fizz um, that's used amazing... Made used making champagne grapes right. um, but from different parts of the world okay. so what makes champagne special is its regionality so it comes from a specific place in France and they use specific grapes and the grapes are Pinot Noir Chardonnay or Pinot Meunier. So all these wines that we're going to taste are a mixture of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir in various different amounts, but from various different places. So you get to kind of taste it and see what happens when you put them in the bottle and they become fizzy and they're from different parts of the world. Okay, we have um, a question for you from Amanda. What's the difference between Cava and Prosecco and which is superior in your opinion? Oh, superior. I think they're just both so different that you couldn't decide that one was above one or another because a okay. well-made Prosecco is a fabulous thing. But essentially, a Prosecco is the name of a grape variety, the same yeah. as Chardonnay or Pinot Noir or any of the other grape names. So Prosecco can be made in three different ways, still, sparkling, or spumante, which is super fizzy. Okay. Um, and then with Cava, you're dealing with different grape varieties, and they're all from the same area it's in Spain. It's quite confusing, though, isn't it, to know what to pick? Are you... Are you so uh, this is why you just get led clue. by me. Really, <laughs> it's kind of hard to know, though. What I tend to do is I tend to take photos mm. of bottles, so then I remember them. Oh, time. I do that, too. Like, I've yeah. got 4,000 photos on my iPhone because I can't keep track of all yeah. of it. But these of are wine. crackers of wine. Yes. Yeah, I know, it's cool. amazing. Tricky. So start off and try this one. Um, <laughs> just a wine. Uh, the first one we're going for is uh, from chili yes so um, this is made in a slightly different method to the other one so that's the glass that's closest to you okay I'll top lovely you up thank as you, you pour. so if you hold that up to me Lucy I will top this little one up for you that's loads. and Neil thank I'll you. do the same for you too that yep one. that one there thank you so um, Cheers, this is a sparkling Cheers. wine it's um, made using as I said Pinot Noir and Chardonnay it's that's really nice. fresh and crispy and lovely and this is made in a slightly different method to the other one so this is made in a tank Cheers. Needs more fermented. saffron. Do you think more saffron? <laughs> <laughs> just to soup some more saffron in, it would help with the yeah, bubbles and yeah. just offset the fruitiness. Really much. Um, so this is made in a tank, which means that the first fermentation happens for the alcohol, and then they put it into a pressurized tank, and the second fermentation happens in there. So as the pressure okay. builds, the bubbles get absorbed into the wine. So what you're looking for is very really fine bubbles. So the smaller the bubbles, the finer your sparkling wine. Oh, I yes, like it. There you go. Spoil. That's a little. That's a little tip. Okay. Um, so the next one that we're going to taste. Off to Australia. It's off to Australia. Now, this is lovely because you're dealing with a vintage okay. sparkling wine. Are these the ones that are yeah, these are the ones, please. The one with her This is all going to get really confusing with <laughs> yeah, the same yeah, colours. Okay. Don't you love this is Andrew all the same. Rose um, So, this is um, a vintage sparkling wine from Australia. This is the one that whenever they have weddings or baptisms or parties or engagements in home and away, they drink. It's Crozier. Thank you. This really? Is a you get this in a diner. Thank yeah. Wow. <laughs> Fine home and away. Um, mm. Smells Summer of Bayland. Al, Al Stewart. <laughs> and the Ooh. Caravan Park. Caravan Park. Nice. Lots of vanilla on that. Yeah, and uh, I'm not as fond of mm -hmm. that as I was the first one. This first is one's a, sweeter. Mm, yeah, this it is, is actually, This yeah. is a step it's more up. Bitter. Because yeah. this is um this is a bottle aged. So this has been put in bottle in 2007. So okay. you've got a bit of age going on. So you've got those secondary flavours that you get in. It's a little bit more complex and a little bit more of a food wine and a really nicely crafted and really, again, tiny, teeny, tiny bubbles. The bubbles are probably smaller in that than they are in this one because this one is fermented in bottle. So they do the first fermentation for the alcohol. Second fermentation, they add in a little bit more yeast, a little bit more sugar. Yeast does its magic and yeah. you end up with bubbles in the glass, which is kind of fantastic. Okay, thank so you. So that's that one. And, then we'll and move on, on to Number three, Number three, which is South Africa. So this is Graham Beck. It's probably one of the most premium wines from South Africa. They make super still wines as well as making this delicious sparkling one. And this one was used in the inauguration for Nelson Mandela and oh, wow. Barack Obama is a fan Good as well. Good company then. So, Only um, fitting that it'd be for us then, eh? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. And this is why I brought it here to you, Lucy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nelson Mandela and Barack Obama. And Barack Obama. It makes sense. Barack yeah, Obama. Makes sense. Yes, well, Barack so. Obama's from Offaly as well, so... I know, but there you go. <laughs> And this one is kind of, I think it's more akin to what you expect That's from stronger. a non-vintage champagne. So it has a little bit more character to it. It's not as fruity and fruit forward as, say, yeah. the first one that we tasted, but a little bit a little bit of biscuit. I got loads of vanilla on this when I tasted it, and I thought it was really kind of nice and sparkly and delicious. So How long does it take you to actually be able to know the difference between the, the flavours in each? Um, 
it's it's a little bit of practice, really, Neil, which is lovely practice to do. Yes. Um, so just you just she start. Hasn't been sober for years. Oh, yes. <laughs> so you just start excuses. chasing it. And if, I am practicing. I'm practicing. Yeah. If you taste them side by side, you'll start to taste the difference. Yes. Because if I gave you any of these glasses completely separately on a glass, you'd be like, oh my god, this is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And now you're starting to see the differences between yes. them. You're starting to go, oh, that favorite. one has a bit more weight. Well, that one. is a bit Me more too. whatever. First one. Favorite for your first Brilliant. one because it's this. a little bit sweeter. The other two I find is yeah. a little bit too bitter for me. Yeah, this is a, these are kind of grown up ones. Yes, these, that makes these, sense. These are grown up kind of posh ones. We are very this one is eighteen ninety nine from most um, off licenses, and you'll have no problem picking you up. You can a drink that in a bouncy castle. Do you think you go to? No, <laughs> no, no, no bubbles everywhere. Again, and you're bouncing as well. Today's guest, Susan. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Do you want to bring over some fizz? Walk and talk. This is the first one. Grab number one and walk over. We are on our way.